Shalom, shalom. Our first nigga foremost, I'd like to give all praises and glory and honor. Let's do to Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, Bashim, Rakakadash. I'm going to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and rule well. Blessings and salutations to the whole elect. Newers in this gospel, brother, lifting up the standard of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Uh, this is just a quick lesson through the Spirit, just an exhortation, you know, for brothers out there, uh, younger brothers, older brothers, whoever. Uh, may tune into the videos to just really take heed. There's a very it's a sifting demon or a sifting agent that's going around the body. Um, I believe that Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai is drawing a, a clear division between uh, men and this thing, and to letting you know who he's dealing with versus the who he's not dealing with. Because as we coming into these times, the evil day, which is known as Jacob's trouble, soon to be the day of the Lord. Okay preceded by ICBM nuclear fire, um, that was going to be a, a great apostasy in the church, man, when men would rise up, bringing up damnable heresies, false doctrines, seeking brethren, heeding disciples after themselves, bugging out, you know, and, and just, just, just all out on a, on a, on a satanic tirade, man. And we're seeing this and what these examples that we're experiencing in the body is no other than what the men of the Lord dealt with in the ancient world. Okay, like when you go into the account of the book of Acts, you go into the book of Romans, you go into the book of Ephesians, all right, and just predominantly the epistles, you will see that you had men that was set up among the body that wasn't right, okay, and that was set up to bring in damnable heresy, heresies, or heresies, heresies, okay, um, <clears throat> he battered them false brethren and to demonize the men of the Lord. As to being false brethren, when in fact they're the ones that's operating out of a malicious spirit. Okay, so you don't want to be you want to be careful not to be caught up in that web of sifting, because it ain't even passed over time yet, and we're seeing all this 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 thing go down, you know, and it's scary, because it's just like who's next, you know, and this put a sudden fear, or this should put a sudden fear in us, man, to not want to be on the Lord's bad side, because it's one thing when you lift it up with pride and. You know, you have nobody correcting you or nobody is speaking. It's It, it kind of goes to your head. You know, it go to your head and before you know it, you become Mr. Untouchable. You become Mr. Uh, uh, unthinkable. You know, nobody can tell me anything, man. I'm an elder. Okay, I'm a man. I've been in this thing, you know, 10 plus years, 15 years, X, X Y, and Z. Nobody can tell me anything because I got a following. And then guys that follow individuals, they end up getting caught up in that web. Like if you ever heard the term, you're guilty by association okay because what happens is a lot, a lot of times when men bring you under their web and it's wickedness a lot of times those behaviors will fall on the men that's among that guy okay and this has happened time and time again but it's it's to the point that this is on a whole different level man and i'm afraid to see what you how about how Sha is going to do around passover time man okay i think this is just like the big warning and me personally, I think the Most High is going to really start killing men that call themselves Israelites, man. And and we don't, you don't want to die this honorable death in this thing, man. Okay, if you have to go to the spirit world, you want it to be in honor, doing the work in good standing with the spirit. Or by, or by martyrdom. But not because you was a scoffer, you was a scorner. You was secretly heaping disciples to yourselves. You had a malicious intent, not taking, you know, bucking up against the leadership you know what I'm saying? Not taking heed, you know, just moving like a just straight nigga out here. You know, and we've seen countless examples of men uh, getting judged in this thing, man. You know, and where are they now? Back in the world, probably some are dead or they become scoffers. So we don't want to fall up in that in that trap, in that despair, man. So for you younger brothers out there, be careful, man, on who you watching, who you dealing with. OK, and take heed. And listen to the men that has been putting out the examples and telling you of these things, man. Okay, some of you guys are just so goddamn blind by your own goddamn deceit and your pride to the point you don't want to hear what brothers are telling you all because they're coming from the or because they have GMS on their name. Because I'll admit it, man. GMS, you know, we've been slandered through the mud, okay? We do, we do not by far have the best reputation among any Israelite group, okay? And that's for a reason. Okay, we that and that's for a reason. Okay, because honestly speaking, you have men that was among us that just wasn't right. Then you have men that secretly slander other men. 
Okay, and that's not a spirit to be in. Okay, and, and notice like a lot of men that, that come up and deal with our camps, they already have, they already look at us at a side eye. Some of the, you got certain people that, 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 that come around just to find offenses in you, man, or to find an accusation in you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, y'all might be teaching the right doctrine, but if you say this wrong or say that wrong, that's a reason for me to come against you. And before you know it, one little slight mishap becomes a shit show, man. And before you know it, you a demon, you wicked, you ain't brotherly, you offensive. It's all this stuff come. It's just like, what the hell? When you a man just like the other man is, you make mistakes. But when I'm realizing men in our church, we don't have room to make mistakes. We can't make mistakes, okay? We have to literally be blameless and perfect before Israel. But yet Israel just is just a bunch of wicked jakes, man. Okay, so anyway, man, we just want to be careful and take heed. And listen to the examples. Listen to what brothers are telling you. Okay, these men that's bringing out videos on this on this one particular individual. And um, I'm not going to really speak on that. I mean, it's, I, I haven't had any experiences with this guy, luckily. But, you know, I've heard things, you know, and I've seen erratic things. I've, I've heard things. I put it that way. You know what I'm saying? And um, you can just kind of pick up on the spirit of individuals. If you just kind of peep them, you can kind of pick up on certain things. But nonetheless, you know, we've had our own fair share of uh, problems, you know, in, in, in situations and experiences, I call them that, because everything you go through in life is a learning experience, man. You know, like the vetting process, you have to learn that so you can know who not to bring into the camp. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times if your vetting process is not seasoned, then you will have a bunch of men that come into the group. And over time, you're going to see them fall out or they're going to get kicked out or suspended. And eventually they're just going to fall out the truth, man. You will see that because they wasn't vetted properly because through inexperience, you didn't know what to look for. But as you grow in this thing, you start to know what to look for. And you can see certain qualities in men that may not be a particular fit for the body. You know what I'm saying? And certain guys just have to do their own thing for a minute until they get it right, you know. But, you know, it's all through this will of your how about you, how about shy. But uh, for you, this is uh, the book of uh, Luke 22. And I'm going to start at verses 31. It says, and the Lord said in me, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has a desire to have you that he may sift you as wheat, man. OK, and you got to understand that Peter being ahead of the church, hey, he had a very special place in the church, man. OK, and spiritual demon Satan uh, uh, was after this man because of the simple fact he knew that the Lord had left the church in his hands once he departed. It was up to Peter and the other apostles, man, to, to, to raise up the Israelites and to bring back fruit, man. Okay, so this is why Peter had some bug out moments, even when he got emotional and Malchus tried to grab up your shine. Peter shut, I mean, cut his ear off. I mean, which is an emotional response. I mean, the average person would have done that because you're not finna grab the Lord. But see, if Peter was in the right mindset, he would have understand that this is head to this was prophecy. OK, but he took it upon himself just in the moment through emotion. And, you know, he wanted to defend the Lord, which was very noble, but it just was out of season, so to speak. But it says, but I pray for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art covered, strength, thy, it says, when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. OK, and that's the point, man. He says he's prayed for thee that thy faith fail not because, see, they don't give you the in-depth of what these men went through in their personal lives, man. OK, just by Peter being ahead of a church, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was attacked by demons. I mean, you got situations when Peter was locked up, man. OK, multitudes came against him and John, OK, called call him false prophets and falsely accusing him. You know what I'm saying? Persecuting him. OK, beating him, putting hands on the disciples, the apostles. And the Lord said, I pray for you so your faith don't get overthrown because the average person, man, it's, it's not easy for people to come up against you one thing about when people come up against you man and the, the spotlight is on you that's a, that that's really a hard pill to swallow man because back of your mind you want to be liked by everybody but what i'm finding out in this truth you can't give a shit about who like you or who don't like you man because it's not about who likes you or who don't like you man if people don't like you then so fucking be it especially if you're trying to do the right thing okay because we ain't in this thing to make friends we ain't in this thing to to, to be the best Hebrew Israelite of the year. We ain't, we ain't passing out Israelite awards, man. Okay, we're here to do the work of the Heavenly Father and keep it that way. Keep your eyes single. Okay, and you can't eternalize everything because when you eternalize your afflictions too much, then you become bitter. 
Okay, you just got to take the, the, the grain. You got to take the, the bitter with the sweet and you just got to have a straight mind. You got to say, you know what? This is a business. This is the Lord's business. It's not about me. I'm just playing my part and may the Lord have mercy. And when you have that mindset, you're able to see past all the bullshit that's going to come and hit you. Because I'm going to tell you straightforward, you are going to go through things in this faith, man. Okay, you are going to be tried and tested. You're going to have people that you're not necessarily very fond of. Okay, and you're going to have people that you are fond of. You're going to be put in situations that you may have to make a decision that you don't want to make. You're going to be put in situations that you may have to be the bad guy and have people to say all manners of falsity towards you, man. Okay? You can't be that guy that don't like to speak up and not say nothing. Because I, I know this, too, about a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of elder brothers, they don't like doing videos on men. They don't like that. They want to be peaceful. But it's just sometimes you got to know when to say, fuck it, I got to take the gloves off and get in this fight. You know what I'm saying? Because, hey, them scoffers, they're not sparing us. Okay, they're not sparing us the headache. They're literally coming at us like, hey, man, we want these, we want y'all out of here. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, the Lord told Ezekiel, make your face hard against thy face, man. He says, and I will make thy head harder than flint. Though they be a rebellious house, be not dismayed at they looks. So, hey, at the end of the day, man, you know, these guys that's coming up against the, 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 the apostleship and the ministry and the doctrine, the Lord's going to do away with all them dudes, man. Because at the end of the day, it's about standing and, and standing victorious before you have a shot and obtaining that crown. And you got to do what you got to do to get it. Okay? A, 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 a incorruptible crown, not a corruptible crown. Because a lot of um, men in this thing, they strive for a, a corruptible crown, man. They want the glory on this side. They want the uh, the preeminence on this side. They want the Hebrew year of the Hebrew of the year award on this side. You know? But it says, and he said it to them, Lord, I'm ready to go with thee both into prison and death. And he said, I tell thee, Peter, the cock shall crow this day before thou shalt thr thrice deny me. It says, it says, Peter, the cock shall not crow this day before that thou shalt thrice deny that thou knowest me. <laughs> All right. And that's the point, man. So the Lord already told him what it was. So, hey, Peter, like, man, look, man, I ain't on that. He thought he knew, you know, being presumptuous, but he had to learn. And, you know, he seen what the Lord told him when he denied the Lord three times. And then he realized it. then it clicked in his spirit like, oh, damn, the Lord did say that was going to happen. But it all had to happen because it must it, it had to be fulfilled, man. OK, because if, if Peter didn't deny the Lord and he didn't do what he had to do, who's to say he probably would have got roped up and put down right along with you. was shy, man. But that was not how the spirit had it to go. All right. Next point. This is the book of Sirach 6, and I'm going to start at verses 1. It says, instead of a friend, become not an enemy, okay? For thereby thou shalt inherit an ill name, shame and reproach. Even so should a sinner that have a double tongue, man. And this is a, man, this is what's happening right now in the body. Okay, you know, it's a situation uh, with this guy, uh, y'all will call, that a lot of uh, information is coming out on this guy. How, you know, it's apparent that he's double-minded. One minute he's saying that, next minute he's jumping around. And instead of a friend, you know, he's made himself an enemy into the body, man. And even the, the, the exhortation videos that's going out on this guy, I'm like, wow, the Lord is, I mean, my brother's really had love for this dude, man, because I can just listen to Ariala's testimony. I'm like, they motherfuckers still love it, dude. Like, people still, like, they love the brother. You know what? Well, they did love him. You know what I'm saying? And, and the Lord is having, like, an exceptional amount of mercy, bro. Certain men ain't giving that kind of mercy. Certain men, man, you mess up. You out of here. You know what I'm saying? They like, look, we don't know you. We don't deal with you. Who are you? You know, some in the spirit and have mercy on who it has mercy on, man. So, hey, I would take this opportunity to really examine, man, and, and try to come correct. Because brothers are doing videos and, yeah, he's getting cursed out. But, you know, it's not like, you know, brothers are just like, just out, just, just straight up really condemning them to death. Brothers like, look, man, just repent and do the right thing. And then if you don't repent, then you're going to be destroyed. It's a lot of mercy, man, because every man don't get those many chances, especially as many offenses as this man. This man has offended several. He's, he, he has a heavy offense on his hand and the most high can. The Lord is not pleased with that. You know, but hey, we're going to see how it's going to end up. Me personally, I don't think it's going to end well for him. But hey, who am I? I don't know how the Lord set this up. So I don't know. But it says extol not thyself in the counsel of thy own heart. Like when you extol, meaning you're putting yourself up there on a pedestal, okay? That thy soul be not torn in pieces as a bull straying alone. <laughs> wow, and we see that a lot. 
we're seeing that through these examples that's coming out. But it says, thou shalt eat up thy leaves and lose thy fruit and leave thyself as a dry tree, man. And one thing about being outed is when you have a following, the men that believed in you, they turn against you. That's a hard pill to swallow, man. Especially when you are impressionable among those men. Because, hey, Jake like power, man. You know, and when you don't have that influential power over a person and you lose that, you become bitter. You start to do everything. It's, it's just like a woman that can't piss you off no more. The next thing she's going to go to is throwing a brick through your vehicle. If that don't work, then next thing you know, she's going to slash your tire. If that don't work, she's going to pop at your crib with another dude, you know, threatening to kill you. So it's just... it. It's 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 a very it's a dangerous game. All right, but it says here, a wicked soul shall destroy him that hath it, and shall make him to be laughed to scorn of his enemies. Okay? But sweet language will multiply friends, and fair speaking tongue would increase kind greetings, but be at peace with many, but nevertheless have but one counsel of a thousand. So, you know, hey, you gotta have those particular men you deal with. Like in this thing, you have certain men you talk to, certain brothers click up, and they can console with one another, man. You know what I'm saying? And talk about their secrets and how they feel versus another brother. You may not go that deep in it because he may not be able to hold water. And y'all just don't have that connection in the spirit like that, though he's, is, he is a brother. And then everybody, you just can't tell everybody shit. You know what I'm saying? Some things it is best to keep to yourself. OK, but it says if thou would get a friend, this is the point. Prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. It says for some men is a friend for his own occasion. And will not abide in the day of thy trouble, man. So, hey, be careful on how you vet these people. Okay? Because a man is saying, Shalom, he comes up with a garment, how about Shemel Shabrakatha, doesn't mean he's a friend. You know, a lot of times, man, y'all be too quick to give people credit, man. And this is the reason why you have all this turmoil in these different camps. Because, hey, y'all just let people cross over. Oh, you want to be an Israelite? Here's your startup package. Bam, you in the camp now. You don't know this guy. You don't know his attentions. You don't know his background. You don't know if he's an agent. You don't know if he has a malicious intent towards you. You don't know if he was he was sent by somebody. You don't know if he's gonna he's here to threaten or to steal from you. Don't know these things, man. You know, and and also being out there on the other side of the line does not mean you get in the camp. Okay, you have to know certain things. You have to pass the test. They call it the troopers test. You know that you have to pass in order to walk and cross over to the camp. That's the new thing now. It's not a new thing. It's been going on. For Salakia but me saying that, but you know, over the years, you know, brothers have gotten in without particularly taking that test, man. But you know, things are tightened up now. The administration aspect of the ministry is growing, so we're more tightly knitted, and you know, we're vetting things with scrutiny, you know. But just do what we're supposed to do. But it says, if thou will get us a friend, prove him first, and be not hasty to credit him. So you can't be quick to give men credit when they don't deserve it or earn it. All right, uh, I'll get one more precept and I'm gonna end it. Jake got to get up out of here, unfortunately. <laughs> like I was telling the brother yesterday, I said, man, I'm to the point, man. I'm just ready to just enjoy not doing nothing. Like for real, like it's, it's always an errand you got to run. It's always a meeting. It's always a job. It's just like they're constantly bombarding us with this nonsense they call life to the point you don't really have time to do anything, you know? You don't really have time to read like you need to read. By the time you get home from work, you're exhausted. You just really want to chill on the couch and go to sleep or do whatever. But it's like this world, this, this place drags you down. So it's, it's through the mercy that we're still even breathing and pushing this world the way we're pushing it, man. That's how you know there's a spirit behind what we're doing. Because honestly speaking, when I come home in the evening, sometimes I don't be in the spirit to read, you know. And if I can't really read, I can't focus on the pages. My mind starts to wander. Shit gets my, I get distracted. So I have to constantly just look at videos and take my notes and and read and read and, you know, just do the best I can and stay in the spirit. But it's not easy, man. You know, especially with all this stupidity they got going on. You got to be, I look, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> Straight up. That's what I be wanting to say to everybody. Like, just leave me alone. This is just what I want to focus on is the truth. Okay. All the videos is coming out. I'm already frustrated with that because I can't see everything I want to see. You know what I'm saying? I can't. Get every video. Like, if it was up to me, I would watch every video, man. But it's physically impossible, and that's very frustrating. <laughs> All right, but, you know, that's how the spirit works. But um, anyway, this last precept, this is the book of um, Amos 9, and I'm going to start at verses uh, 8. It says, Behold the eyes of the Lord Yahweh upon the sinful kingdom, and I will destroy it from off the face of the earth, saving that I will not utterly destroy the house of Jacob, says the Lord. For lo, I will command, and I will sift the house of Israel among all nations, like as corn is sifted in a sieve, and ye should, and it says, and yet shall not the least grain fall upon the earth, man. Okay, 
Verse 10, all the sinners of my people should die by the sword, which say the evil should not overtake us nor prevent us. Okay, but the point is we are in a heavy sifting process. This, this is, man, I'm seeing a distinction now. Okay, the scriptures say you should come and discern between the righteous and the wicked. And we're clearly being able to discern between the two. I clearly see what side I don't want to be on. Okay, and I'm seeing men that was once on this side fall by the wayside because of the division. And I'm just like, wow, how can you be so naive and dumb? Like, you don't see this coming out. But usually in that regard, men, they have already had their own problems or they've had their own animosities with brothers among the body for whatever reason. So therefore, they use any excuse they can use in order to come against, you know, the, the grain, so to speak. But it's all good because, hey, all you will be dealt with in due time. But with that, all praises and glory and honor that's due to you. And with that, shalom.